Today I'm going to show you how you can easily create a mood board in Procreate so you can share it on your social media or add it to your portfolio. Hi, I'm Sandra Bowers, and if you're new to my channel, this is where I share with you my creative journey. Remember to hit the subscribe button. I'm using the brushes in my newest brush set, the Mood Board Wizard. I'm going to create a new canvas here that's 1200 by 1200 pixels, and I'm going to make it 140 dpi. I like using these specs for my Instagram posts, but you can use whatever size you want. If you want to print these, then make them bigger and make them 300 dpi so that it's printing resolution. In color profile, I'm using RGB because it's going to go to the web. So click create and here we have our new document. The first thing to do is to set the background. I'm going to choose this color. A neutral color is always great for mood boards, so it doesn't compete with your art. After you install your brushes, your newest brush set will always be at the top of the brush library, so it's really easy to find. And in the first layer, I'm going to create our main image, which is going to be the tiger. I want to add a bold frame to it. The cool thing about this set is that you can make the elements any color you want, so you have infinite possibilities. Let's choose this very light cream color. The brushes are very large because they're high resolution, so if we use this at the biggest size, you won't even see it because it's going to be bigger than your canvas. So reduce the size and tap once. And make sure it's not cut out, because if it goes over the canvas, then it will cut out some parts. You can always reduce the size with the selection tool, but don't make a small stamp and then decide to make it bigger, because the edges will become very fuzzy. It's always better to stamp something big and then reduce its size. If you have uniform selected, it won't ruin the proportions. If you want to alter the proportions, then deselect uniform. Now I'm going to import my tiger illustration. So just insert a photo because I have it saved in my camera roll. And then I choose my tiger and I'm going to drag that layer underneath. Now I can use the selection tool to modify the size. If I wanted it smaller, it would fit perfectly under the frame and we would be done. But I wanted to show you what to do in case you have areas that overlap. If I want to crop the outer edges, I go to my eraser. And for this, I love using the airbrushing hard airbrush and just erase. And that's done. It's super fast. This way, it looks like a paper print. If you want it to look like a frame print, you can duplicate your frame layer and then select this one underneath. And here I'm going to choose the adjustments and go to Hue, Saturation, Brightness and reduce the brightness to None. This will make your frame totally black. Then go back to the adjustments, go to Gaussian Blur and I'm going to slide it. See here? Slide it until you start seeing it come out from underneath the other frame. And I will just press here. Now I'll move that a bit so it looks like the shadow is coming from here. So it's kind of passing over the painting and underneath the frame. And I'm going to go here and set that to multiply. What multiply does is that it makes this layer sort of transparent so it lays over the paint underneath. Now reduce the opacity. You can make it as harsh or as soft as you want. I think that works. And you can even have a glare as if it was under glass. Just go to the image, add a new layer, and set that to clipping mask. What a clipping mask does is that whatever you do in this layer is only going to affect the layer underneath. Let's say I paint on it with a brush. See? It doesn't go outside the image. That's super handy. Let's go back into our mood board wizard brushes and here you'll find the shadows. If you use one of these for a glare, it's perfect for a frame. So I'll select some white and just tap. And just with one tap, you've installed some glass. I don't want the glare on this one right now, so I'm going to delete it and this is ready. If you're very pressed for layers, you can just merge them and then you have one layer. Or if you're not, because usually for social media, you're not using a gigantic canvas and you get many, many layers, you can just group them. And even if you're not going to rename all your layers, 
Just rename your group and it will make your life way easier. This is going to be the tiger, obviously. That one's ready. And this actually takes like one minute once you've learned how to use the elements. Now I want to add some color chips. So let's create a new layer. Here is the color chip. I want the color chip to be white too. So I'm just going to press Reduce the size, maybe like that. And there's three ways you can fill this with colors. You could also put a picture underneath it if you want it. But I'm going to show you how to fill it with colors. The first one is the really fast way. I will just drag this and ta-da, done. But then if I want to keep changing this color, I can keep doing it, but there's some colors that will start to bleed into the frame. Plus everything will be in one layer, so it's harder to edit. So I don't like doing that too much, but it's a very quick way if you need something really fast. The second way is the slow version where you create another layer, you drag it underneath, and then you use a brush and you just color it in and then erase the overlaps. Here I'm using one of my watercolor brushes. I would only use that if I really wanted to use the texture of a brush, for example, and not a solid color, because the texture looks really cool and adds some interest. Okay, let's undo that. And the third way, which is great for solid colors, is that you set the frame layer to a reference. And now, whatever you paint in this layer underneath is going to be guided by that reference layer. So see? It only painted inside it. So this is also a really fast way and you get to keep the frame and the color separate, which is really great for editing later. Let's make this one this color and I want to add a shadow to this one too. So again, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to select the one underneath. Make sure to deactivate that reference or it will start messing up your life later. And I'm going to go here and again, hue saturation, reduce it to none, add Gaussian blur, and slide it. Not too much because it's a piece of paper, so it shouldn't have like a super big shadow. This is a frame, so it should cast a larger shadow than paper. I'm dragging it down a bit. Deselect, go to the layers, and set that to multiply and reduce the opacity. You'll get super used to this step soon because I love adding shadows to all my mood boards. And if I don't want it casting a shadow inside here, I only want it casting a shadow outside because this is not a frame, it's a piece of paper. I can use my eraser and just erase this part of the shadow. That way it looks like the color chip is printed on the paper and not like something that's framing the color chip. Okay. So let's group this. This will be color chip one. And duplicate the whole group. Now I just want to change the color of this color chip to maybe this green. I'll show you how I selected my color palette. What I would do is just leave my finger pressed so it picks up the color from my main image. And then I would go to my palettes and add them here just by tapping. So the green. I added the black. The light beige and every color. And that's how I built this palette. I recommend you do that with your main image. So then you have a consistent color palette for your mood board and everything goes together. And let's rename these to color chip two. We want to move the whole group and we're going to position them and make them smaller. Remember not to make anything bigger, but you can make them smaller. I want this one to be on top of this one, for example, so I'm just going to drag it up and you can rearrange your elements this way really easily. I think it will be cute to add the name of the color, so I'll create a new layer. And I'm using the fine tip brush in the inking set and write the number and name of a color that I made up. This looks really pixelated because I'm really zoomed in. 
And then I'm going to repeat that with the second color chip in a new layer, just in case I mess it up and I don't like it, then I can erase it or hide it. Let's call this one Wasabi. Okay, great. I want to hold those with some tape. So I'll create a new layer on top of them and go to my brushes. And here you'll find the tapes. I love the polka dot tapes and I'm always using them because they're my favorite, but there's also solid tapes here. I'm going to choose the polka dot brush. I still have my black color selected and I'm just going to tap. I'll reduce the size, rotate it. You can deactivate the magnetics if you want. It's easier to reposition things that way. Just place it there and then just duplicate that and move this one here. I want this one to be underneath, so I'm going to drag it underneath the other layers. And we're done with that part. I want to add a moth I created, so let's add some notebook paper here. I'm going to create a new layer and let's choose a torn notebook paper. I'll make it this color and make it smaller. And I think I want to move this color a bit. So now we can add the image to our paper. So go to insert the photo and I'll go to my recent ones and I'm inserting my moth illustration. I want to show you something. These photos are just illustrations I've created in Procreate. Here you can use your own pictures, illustrations, patterns, whatever you want. So after I'm done illustrating them, I just share as a JPEG or PNG if they have a transparent background and I save them on my camera roll. Now let's get back to our moth. Select that and make it smaller. With the torn paper, you can create this really cool effect where you can have your image torn also. So go to that image, tap on it, and set it to clipping mask. And it will look like it's torn because it places it inside the paper layer. I think that's a really cool effect, but you can also just place it in the middle of the paper. So that's done. Now let's add some tape to it. If it's too big and it goes outside the canvas, it cuts off the image so you have to undo and then reduce the size before you tap again. See how realistic the texture is? Well, it's a bit blown up here because of the light, but they're very real because they're scanned from real pieces of tape. Let's add a shadow to this one too. And you know the drill. Now I'll group these. This is a tiger moth, well, sort of a stylized tiger moth. I thought it would go well with my tiger theme. Now I want to add a tag here. So let's create a new layer again. Find our solid shapes. The solid shapes are great because you'll always get a perfect shape. And maybe we'll make this one this color and see what happens. If you don't like the color, just drag another color on there. And we're going to create a new layer and set that to clipping mask. And I want to add some decorations here. For that, you can use your brush and paint on it, whatever you want. Or you can also use your tapes to decorate. So again with the polka dot tape. Oh, that's too big. Undo that. Now modify it and place it. And I think it gives it such a pretty effect. And then in your tag, you can write anything you want or add an image. 
Here I can edit this, change the size. Change the leading so there's less space between the lines. And we're going to add a shadow to the tag also. You know how to do it by now. And let's group this. Finally, let's add some fabrics here. Create a new layer. Go to the mood board wizard brushes and here's the fabric swatches. Let's use this one. I'm going to create a new layer on top, set that to clipping mask and use a dotted brush. This brush is from a set that I will be releasing in the future sometime soon. By the time you watch this video, they might be live or not. I'll leave the link in the comments when they are. You can just subscribe to my newsletter to get the notification when I release new things and also get some freebies. I want to change the background color to black and add a shadow. Now I'll group them. This will be fabric one. and duplicate the group. This one is fabric two. I'll delete this layer, add a new one, and set it to clipping mask again. Here you can add any image, your own fabric pattern. These fabric swatches work great for that, or you can draw on it like I'm doing, whatever you want. I'll make the background green, and I'll draw on it with black with this pattern brush, And that's it. Now I'll move them and reposition them. I think they need some pins. For that, just go to the mood board wizard brushes and select the solid circle. I'll choose a yellow and tap once. Reduce the size. And go to the layer and swipe right on it to activate the alpha lock so you can only paint inside the circle. And I'll use the soft brush in airbrushes and gold colors to create a shiny effect. Then I duplicate it and place it on this one too. When I'm done, I like looking at the whole thing to see if it's working. Here, I'm not happy with the moth. So what I did is I went back to my original moth illustration and changed the background color to blue and added some line worth details. Then I'll save it as a JPEG, save it to my iPad and go back. Go to the moth layer and add that image here. I'll position it roughly. Since I'm placing my image in between a clipping mask layer and a normal layer, it will automatically become a clipping mask layer. So that's perfect. And I'm going to delete this one because we don't need it. I'm going to reposition this one. Oh, I like that so much better. It gives it a bit more balance. Finally, the shadows. This is the finishing touch and it's super on trend. Go to the top of your stack, add one layer, then choose a dark color. Go to the brushes and at the bottom, you will find the shadows. Which one should we add? Maybe this evergreen leaf. If you make the shadows really big, you can create one effect. And if you make them smaller, you'll get a more defined shape. Let's move that.
And if you go here, you can reduce the opacity to make it as subtle as you want. It could be super soft effect or it could be a very visible shadow. And there is our mood board. Now for the finishing touch, create a new layer and now you can use your logo stamp, which hopefully you've customized by now. If you haven't, you can watch the tutorial. I will leave the link below in the comments or you can look for the PDF that's included with your brush pack. So by now you'll have your own logo or signature as a stamp. So just tap to brand your content and it looks so cute. I'm going to delete that because we don't want that one. And just go here, share as a JPEG and send it directly to your social media. I usually don't do that. I just save it on my iPad so I can use it later and in different places. And that's it. Now you know how to create a mood board and the possibilities are endless. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe and tag me on Instagram if you create something and you want to show me. Bye.